Welcome to this WiseAl tutorial on tracked properties in Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. So we'll begin by looking at the example we're going to look at, which is timing how long an action takes to run. We'll create the outline flow, and then we'll create both the start time of the action and the end time. And finally, we'll calculate the difference in milliseconds between the two, and that will tell us how long the action took to run. But that's enough of looking at me. I'm going to vanish now. And let's get started. So the idea behind this example is we want to time how long something takes to run. So what I'm going to do is to run a task, it's this one, to get the rows from an Excel spreadsheet. And what we'll do is set a start time before we run it, get the end time after you run it, set two variables to hold those two bits of information, calculate the difference between them, and then show the results. You'll learn two things from this tutorial. One is something called tracked properties. Let me show you what they look like. Uh, there's a tracked property just lurking there. And the second thing you'll learn is more about expressions in Power Automate, which is always a good thing to practice. So just to show you what this is going to look like, I'm actually going to run it. My prediction is it will take 38 milliseconds, but let's see if that's true. So if we look at the results, you can see that it started and finished, and you can see it took 83 milliseconds. So I've run a few of these, and that's actually one of the longest it's taken. My computer must be getting tired. So to get this to work, the first thing you need to do is to create an instant cloud flow. And what I'm going to do is to manually trigger my flow and add a step in to get some information from Excel. You could do absolutely anything you like. I'm going to get the list rows present in an Excel table. You could do any task you like. I just want to make sure that it doesn't happen so quickly that the time is unmeasurable. So what I'm going to do is choose as a file my list of movies, which from memory had quite a lot of records in. Uh, so hopefully that will take some milliseconds to retrieve. So there's the thing I want to time. What I can now do is set a start time for this. So what I now want to do is to get what time this task started at. Now I'm going to have to refer to this task by name in an expression. So I'm going to shorten my name. I'll just call it list rows. That's got a space in. Remember that. What we can then do is to set something called a tracked property. So you can click on the three dots to the right of the task name, choose settings, scroll down the list, and right at the bottom you'll see some tracked properties. Whether you won't, but you're about to add one. So I'm going to create a tracked property called start time. And the expression I'm going to set it to is this. Even by Power Automate standards, this is difficult syntax. So UTC now will give the current date and time. I need the at before it, and I need to include the whole thing in double quotation marks. So make sure you get that right. What I can now do is to capture that in a variable so I can refer to it in the future. I'm going to add a step to initialize a variable. And I'll call my variable uh, start time. And you might think at this point it's going to be a float. But if you do that, it crashes. It's actually returned as a string, which doesn't seem to make a huge amount of sense to me. Now, what I want to do is set this variable equal to the value of my tracked um, property. So to do that, I can go to my expressions. I can type in actions. I then want to refer in brackets to the action, which is which has a tracked property. So that's called list rows. I can then optionally put a question mark if I think the property I'm trying to get at is going to possibly be um, null or not. And then what I can do is refer to the tracked properties. So to do that, I can put a square brackets, I can put a single inverted comma, and then I can type in tracked properties, which is the section of the output which contains the tracked properties, then a forward slash, and then the name I gave it, which is start time. And with a bit of luck, when I choose OK, it will accept that. What I can then do is actually check that this is working by adding another step to display this. So I'm going to create a new step. It would just be a simple compose. And what I'll do is display the start time. And I'll put in the value of my variable. And I think without any further ado, we need to test this to see if it's working. So I'll save that. If it saves it, that's always a good sign. It doesn't. 
And the reason it doesn't work is it's saying there's an invalid reference to the list rows task. How can that be? I typed it in absolutely perfectly. But that's the problem. I did type it in perfectly. I shouldn't have done. So what I'm going to do is come out of this to go and editing it. Uh, it looks like I need to edit it here. So I'm going to go into my uh, initialize variable task and go to my actions. And it turns out that if you have spaces and action names and want to refer to them, you need to replace, this, replace the spaces with underscores. Who knew? So now if I try saving that, it accepts it. I'm just going to rename this before I do anything else. And let's call it time something in Power Automate. And then we can try running it. Save that and run it. And with a bit of luck, when I look at my compose at the bottom, it will tell me the start time of this task. But unfortunately, as you can see, the outputs are completely blank. Now, I'd love to say this is a deliberate error I made, but it wasn't. Um, having done a little bit of research, I thought, well, why on earth would the start time be blank? And then I went up and looked at the variable and saw that was blank too. And the only reason the variable can possibly be blank if I am setting it incorrectly. And the reason I'm doing that is back to this original attract property. So if you go to look at this, you'll see I somehow managed to type in two I's in start time. There was a nice little bug. So if I choose done for that and try running my flow a second time, this time I hope it will work. I've run out of explanation as if it doesn't. So now when I go down to the compose task, you can see it set the start time correctly. So it's all good. So what I'm now going to do is set the end time. So I'll just go back into editing this. I'm going to rename this initialize variable time, uh, task rather, action, and call it set start time. And I might as well flag at this point how long the task took by adding another tracked property here. I'm going to settings. And for this, there's no other things I can set, so I can just add the start, the tracked property. We'll call this end time and I'll set this to be the same as it was before. So again, I have to be very careful with my typing and punctuation, but I think that will work, and choose done. Then what I need to do is set a variable equaling this, so I'm going to add in another task, and this will be a variable task, and I'll call it, so it's going to initialize a variable. I'll call this um, set end time, I'll create a variable called end time. Again, it's going to be a string variable. And again, what I'm going to do is set this equal to the value of the action. Just to make life a little bit easier, perhaps, I could go into the previous one, copy that, and then paste it into my box, and then just change a few things. I'm going to change the name of the action, which is now called set start time. I need to put underscores to replace the spaces. And the tracked property whose value I'm picking up is the end time. So with a bit of luck now, in my final compose task, I'll be able to put the end time in and display the value of the variable and try running this. Hopefully I haven't put any extraneous eyes in this time. So if I try running that, and what you should see is there's a tiny difference between the start time and the end time. And there is very tiny in this case. Um, so what I now need to do finally to get this to work is just to calculate the difference between them. So the final thing we're going to do is to calculate the difference, the number of milliseconds between the start and the end time, rather than having to decipher the date and time strings to get at it. So to do that, I can add an action. It's going to set yet another variable, which is variable. Uh, I'm going to initialize a variable. I'll call it difference. And it's going to be an integer because it's a number of milliseconds between two times. Before we set the expression, I just want to show you what it's going to look like. So this is the expression we're going to copy over. What it does is take the value of the end time variable. It then uses the ticks function to turn that into the number of ticks in the clock cycle and then divides that by a thousand, 10,000 rather. And the reason it does that is ticks really don't last very long at all. And to get the number of milliseconds, you have to divide it by 10,000. So that figure I've got highlighted shows the number of milliseconds at the end time. That shows the number of milliseconds at the start time. And the sub function gives the difference between the two. So I'm just 
we'll copy all that to the clipboard and I can now go to my uh, power automate expression I can go to the expression builder paste that in use okay and what I now want to do is in my final compose let's show the time taken I'll put in the value of my variable which is the difference and oops I'll just add the word milliseconds at the end of it and save that so now if I try running this what I'm hoping is that it should tell me how long it took I'm expecting to see somewhere between 30 and 100 milliseconds and you can see it's actually taken 55 milliseconds on this occasion about bang in the middle of my range so that's how you can use attract properties and also shows you a bit more about the syntax of creating expressions in Power Automate.